What'd you do? Well, I've done it. And I've cut two holes in the Europa. On either side, that's for the vent to go in. So I just made my initial uh, two inch cut is the full diameter of the vent. And a neat trick to get the foam that's sandwiched between the inner skin and the outer skin is to use a little wire brush on a Dremel. And you just come in here and you zip it along. And that'll take it out real quick. And once that foam is out, then you come around and kind of make a nice ramp, if you will, for the layers to lay up on. And you can see the outer skin um, protruding through there. And you want to bond against that. That's the important part. And so you got to remove the foam because the foam is not structural in this setup. Uh, the glass, the fiberglass that lays on it is the structural part. So you want that gone to give a nice base for that vent to bond into. And what you see in the center there, that's the outer uh, kind of like a skin coat I put on, a template. Uh, before I cut the hole, I put that on the side, let it cure, it's a splash mold. So when I come back and tape that to the side, it'll give me something for the, the glass from the inside to lay up against to match the contour of the, the outside skin. That's the plan anyway. But man, it hurts to drill a, that size of a hole through the side of the airplane. I didn't get any video of the layup. I didn't start the camera on purpose because it probably would kill the battery and take up all the video space. But this is a post layup. I've got the splash mold in place. As you can see there, it's held on by aircraft grade duct tape. And as you come around here, that is the finished product of the layup. Inside the cutout area, three layers of bid, which is the distance for the flange on the vent, so it'd sit flush on the outside. And the fourth one there just reinforces the outside part of it. Same thing on this side. And little trick to keeping your bi-directional in uh, shape, let's go over to the trash can is I use this plastic and I had a piece of plastic on the bottom so it keeps my work surface clean. Put the bi-directional down and then put down the epoxy on top of that and then another layer on top of that and then I squeegee it all out. It allows the squeegee to move smoothly without catching the fibers and any excess you just push to the edge of the, the cloth there, or I'm sorry, the, the plastic. And as you can see in here, uh, there's a bunch of circles. And so what I used is a little disc cutter. I already had the uh, dimensions marked out and just traced around that. These are my templates for the diameter. And this was that small piece that I was talking about. It's got a kind of a donut, so it sits on the center like that. But uh, this works really nice on cutting it out getting it in the airplane with keeping one layer of plastic on to take the underside off and I leave the top layer on it keeps the fiber from or the cloth from stretching and that allows me to make a very consistent uh, layered approach starting with the wider on the bottom and then kind of stair step up and that way the edge isn't a, a jump here I did come in for all the defect areas with some flocks just to fill it in so I had a nice transition. Uh, after that, put on a piece of bidirectional or um, Dacron cloth, peel ply. And the trick for that is after you put it on, add just a skim layer, very, very light uh, epoxy on top. And the only reason for that is so when you come back with the cellophane, it, ha it sticks to it very nice. And then you're able to push out all the air and you kind of lock out any air from getting back in here and lift wanting to lift up that those fibers around the concaved areas it's all it's like a poor man's vacuum bag without the vacuum if you if you will and so that that leaves a that removes a lot of the voids uh, so it's been 
a little over an hour since I've um, mixed the epoxy. And you can kind of see the results of of that pot life. You can see it's just kind of gooey. Uh, it doesn't want to run. It, otherwise, it would be dripping off of the brush, holding it up like that. And this, you at this point, you really wouldn't want to use this stuff anymore. Um, you could use it to do a quick touch-up area, but to spread it out in new cloth, forget it. You're not going to be able to, to use epoxy when it's at that state. Um, I always leave it out instead of throwing the trash can, so I can verify that it did harden to its full cure. And uh, same with the flocks here. I have I made more than I needed. I thought I would need more in the divots, but very few flaws to to really kind of fix. Well, the post cure job is done on the ultimate ventilator. You can see my homemade clamp here. Uh, since I was able to take the center part of the vent out, I could use a bolt to go through it and just use some shims with some tape on it so it wouldn't stick to the glue. Just kind of clamp it to the other side. I, I made a kind of like a wooden pad to evenly distribute the pressure around it. So you can see the redux, the green goo. <laughs> it's a Epibond or 420. It has few different names but that stuff is incredibly strong it's it's what you see throughout the green bonding surfaces within the hull of the airplane all right doesn't look bad very little over over uh, squeeze out from the redux that wasn't behind it and it filled those holes nice and even and on the outside you can kind of see the the ring, I was struggling a little bit to get this ring flush with the outside, and you can see it's just barely below the surface. Out here it's pretty flush. Um, and that, My goal was to get it as flush as possible, and I'm going to come back and fill and paint it. It'll hide all of that pretty well. The, the vent, of course, will be recessed just a little bit. You'll notice it. The, the goal wasn't to make it completely hidden, just mainly functional so I've already set up the other side and let me show you what that looks like uh, over on the co-pilot side let me zoom out a bit on the airplane so you can get an idea of where we're talking about so right below the the canopy front windscreen right here capture the flow of air and direct it right onto you Here's the co-pilot side, and you can see it's very flush to the surface. It looks kind of messy, but it's actually, the thickness on the side here is basically the release tape that was around this when I did this, um, what is it, the splash mold over the top when I came back, and this was the squeeze out of the, the, the resin there, and the Flox resin mix. So, and then you can see that be bond protrudes a little bit around that. So it's it's a very nice flat finish. So as you're flying along and you get hot, you can twist this around, and basically air will go in, and you can direct this a little bit to kind of direct the airflow, and you know make it a little smaller, maybe direct down towards your feet. But that's the idea, is just a nice simple close it off or open up a lot of air. And you see from the inside, just twist this knob here. And there you go.